Senator Johnson. Hey, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Donovan, welcome back. I, I want to spend a little bit of time, some short answers on things I think we agree on. Uh, you talked about economic growth, uh, Senator Sanders did. I mean, that's, that's a major component of solving this problem, economic growth, correct? That's correct. Um, from 2009 to last fiscal year, uh, can you also confirm we've actually increased revenue to the federal government by $916 billion per year? I, I don't it, have that number. It went from $2.1 trillion to $3 trillion, over $900 billion. $874 billion of that was just due to meager economic growth. O only $42 billion was attributed to that fiscal cliff tax deal. So I'm just trying to point out that economic growth really does provide the revenue that Senator Warner was talking about. We need to concentrate on that. Uh, to personalize this, what, I, it's important for us to point out why debt is such a problem. If, if you're a family in debt over your head, it's kind of hard to grow your personal economy, isn't it? Because you know, the debt collectors are, are knocking on the door and, and anything past subsistence spending is, is really spent to service the debt. Isn't that correct? I guess I would say if you're not investing in education and other critical things for your family. But if you're in debt over your head, you, you, don't, you don't even have the money to invest in that, as Senator Graham was talking about, because you're, so much of your income is being spent just servicing the debt. I mean, is that what happens with a family? And the same thing is true on a national basis. Let's, let me ask you one other thing. If you're going to solve a problem, is the first step to solve a problem admitting you have one and then properly defining it? Would you agree with that? Uh, I guess I would say our budget does take on the key. Not, I'm not talking about your budget. I'm just talking about solving a problem. Debt. You got to admit you have one and properly define it, correct? Uh, let, let, let's, let's go to the charts. Um, I would think that we don't have just a 10 year budget window problem, although I realize that's what your budget is confined to. We have a 30 year demographic problem. You talked about that. The, the baby boom generation, we're retiring to 10,000 people today. We've made all these promises. And we really don't have a way to pay for them. And, and by the way, I have to challenge uh, Senator Sanders. We want to save Social Security and Medicare. That's our goal. We want to save it, make it sustainable for future generations. But this is a chart uh, of the CBO's alternate fiscal scenario in terms of deficits over the next 30 years. Uh, does this look pretty accurate to you? Nine, about $9 trillion. You're, you're seeing about $8 trillion in the first 10, day, 10 years, which is the budget window we're talking about now. But then $31 trillion in the next decade. 87 trillion in the third decade for a whopping total of 126 trillion dollars of deficits over the next 30 years. That's that's pretty accurate according to CBO's alternate fiscal scenario. Correct. Well, I, I think that's before our policy, which is, I said earlier, let's, let's, not let's, just over the 10-year window, but over the 25-year window. Let's, let's talk about would the, stabilize debt as a share of GDP, which is again, uh, this doesn't measure it as a share of the economy. CBO says that the right way to measure it is a share of the economy. So now, if you take a look at that $126 trillion, that's comprised of about $15 trillion of deficits in Social Security, about $35 trillion of deficits in the Medicare program, and then $71 trillion of interest on the debt. OK? So again, talking to what, or responding to what Senator Graham was talking about, interest starts dwarfing all the other problems. Let me go to the next chart here, because I, I, I realize these are projections. And so we really have to kind of compare, you know, how likely is this? And I'm, all I really have to go is on history. So what we've done is we've just taken f total federal spending over the last 30 years compared to this 30-year alternate fiscal scenario just for reasonableness. So entitlements over the last 30 year, year, years, we spent about 7.9% of GDP on entitlements. We're looking at about $13.3 trillion. And by the way, when I was working with Sylvia Burwell, White House figures are about $14 trillion. Defense, last 30 years, about 4.1. Alternate fiscal scenarios, 3.5. All other spending, 6.4 over the last 30 years. Alternate fiscal scenarios, 6. And then, of course, interest is a plug. To me, if anything, the alternate fiscal scenario might be understating the size of the problem. My question to you, in your budget deliberations, are you looking at the 30-year problem? And, 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 and if you are, what has the president included in his budget to address the long-term unsustainability of both Social Security and Medicare? Because those are what drives the debts, which does produce $71 trillion of interest payment. So uh, the three key things that I think we could all agree are really driving these deficits and debt over the long term, health care costs, a uh, lack of uh, enough workers, as we talked about earlier, relative to the number of retirees that we have, and having adequate revenue. And all of these key things that we attack in our budget 
the impacts grow over time. And so whether it's uh, the capital gains reforms and others that grow substantially in the second decade and beyond, immigration reform, which grows from $160 billion of deficit reduction in the first decade to $700 billion in the second decade and more beyond that, or many of the healthcare changes, the $400 billion in the first decade grows to a trillion dollars in the second decade. So we are absolutely focused on making smart choices that would grow in impact over time uh, with a focus on the deficit. You're talking about debt. a trillion, and we're looking at $126 trillion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Baldwin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh